Hey guys, Andre here today. Wanted to talk to you guys about the P0299 underboost code. You'll get this code on a lot of modern turbocharged engines if something is not working correctly with the turbo or the rest of the system. Now the goal today is for me to explain how all the parts in this system work together so you can try to figure out what the root cause of your problem is. I've seen way too many people on forums, on Facebook, um, find this code, go online and try to get help and the first answer they get is, oh your turbo is bad, you have to replace your turbo. Well, that could be the problem, but that isn't always the problem. And so you don't go out and spend money, you don't have to. It's a lot better to understand how everything works and to diagnose your issue before you go off spending $700 on a new turbo, okay? So bear with me here. I'm using this camera for the first time, so I'll try to explain how this all works. All right, so this is my Chevy Cruze. It's a 1.4 liter turbo. And uh, <clears throat> this, these principles will apply to other vehicles, but hopefully seeing this on this vehicle will help make it more sense. Now I've got an upgraded turbo on this one, but this is my original turbo with about 73,000 miles on it. All right, so the way the turbos generally work is you've got intake, I mean, sorry, exhaust ports that go into the turbo right here. This connects to your cylinder head. And what happens is exhaust gas comes in through these ports and into this snail here, which is your exhaust turbine housing. Your actual exhaust turbine is right there. You can see those fins, they look like a fan. What happens is when the exhaust flows in through these ports, it'll try to come out through this hole right here. In order to do that, it will spin these blades. All right. Now this happens at about up to 200,000 RPM. So we're talking very, very fast movement here. <clears throat> and this has a shaft in the middle. And the shaft is connected through bearings to this side, which is your your intake turbine housing. You can't see it, but I'm just telling you that it's here. Okay, you can see kind of a similar setup here. So what happens is, when this turbine shaft spins to let air flow out, this turbine shaft spins to suck air in through the intake, so it'll push it out here through the engine, okay? Now, the boost pressure on this engine is managed by the ECU. It doesn't have an external boost, um, an external boost regulator or a boost timer, whatever you want to call it. It'll actually be managed by the ECU using this wastegate right here. It's an internal wastegate, not an external one. And the internal wastegate is controlled by a wastegate actuator. And the way this works is, there's a solenoid right here, which connects a vacuum line or a boost line into this wastegate actuator. There's a diaphragm in here and a spring on this side that's keeping the wastegate pressed this way. And when the arm for the wastegate actuator, I'm sorry, it's pressed that way. When the arm for the wastegate actuator is pulled this way, okay, you have to actually pull this out. It's going to be pulled this way. The wastegate inside is shut closed. Now, when I put pressure on this part of the wastegate actuator, we'll actually pull this shaft outward. It's hard to see, but I could overcome the spring pressure a little bit and it'll actually cause this arm to open. I'm going to flip it over to show you what that looks like. When this arm opens even a little bit, it gives you access to the wastegate housing. And the wastegate housing allows pressure built up into this exhaust turbine housing to escape. So now the exhaust pressure is not coming out through here, through the turbine. It's coming out right here and escaping. So in this way, the engine is able to regulate how much boost the turbo is making. So if you're making too much boost, the car will open the wastegate through the wastegate actuator and allow boost to escape. Now it's not going to be all the way wide open. It's going to be cracked open just a little bit to allow just as much uh, you know, boost to escape as necessary. So this all makes sense, I hope. The problem comes when the car sets off a code for a underboost a P0299 turbo underboost. And what that basically means for some is that the turbo is bad because the turbo is not making as much boost as the car wants it to. What I want to explain here is that that's not necessarily the case. What's happening is that the engine is not seeing in the intake manifold, in the charge pipes, how much boost it expects to be making for a given operating condition like engine temperature, intake temperature, load, etc. So for a given set of parameters that the engine is calculating, it's not seeing as much boost as it wants to. Now there's a bunch of reasons for this, all right? 
The first reason is potentially that you've been using a really shitty oil this whole time, excuse my French, and this turbine shaft here has a ton of play in it. And when it's got a ton of play, it's not gonna be rotating freely, and you're gonna send an underboost code because your turbo is shot, it's gone. So you need to replace the turbo because you'd be using really crappy oil and you should not do that anymore, okay? Another potential issue is that you've got cracks in the wastegate housing. Now, if you can see here, if I can focus this, above my fingernail, you see one crack. And over here on this side, above my fingernail, you'll see another. All right? And this is totally normal. I don't know if I've seen a single turbo with an internal wastegate that does not have those cracks. That is very normal. It's only an issue if the cracks get very large to the point where they are leaking boost when the when the engine wants this flap closed. So the engine does not want to be leaking boost, but the cracks are causing boost to leak, okay? Now, normally, I think that even if you do have that crack on its own, it will not pose, it will not trip an under boost code because the engine has, the engine allows a certain variance. It allows a certain tolerance for how much boost it allows the turbo to make more or less than what it's commanding. It's when you fall out of that range that the code is tripped. All right, and I'll show you some of the potential reasons why. In another video, I showed you guys how to perform a boost leak test on this 1.4 liter turbo engine. Now I showed you that throttle body to charge pipe connection right here can sometimes leak. I showed you in the PCV system that the intake manifold check valve can leak, which is actually a very large boost leak. When that goes out, you're basically leaking boost from the intake, from the high pressure side of the intake. It's leaking boost through the PCV tracked over here to the turbo inlet, all right? That's another potential source of a boost leak. The point that I want to reiterate as many times as possible is that a P0299 code, all it means is that you're not making as much boost as the ECU wants you to be. Normally, the cracks on the wastegate housing alone are not enough to trip that code, but if you've got a crack in the wastegate housing here and a bad intake manifold check valve and three or four boost leaks around the engine, or even one for that matter, that will be enough to trip the code. But you may be able to continue using your turbo if all you do is fix the PCV issue or the boost leaks or whatever else is wrong with your engine. All right. So hopefully this explains a little more about how the, um, the P0289 code is tripped. Again, it doesn't mean your turbo's bad. There are no sensors here to tell the tur to tell the ECU, you know, what RPM the turbo is operating at, whether or not it's operating at its maximum efficiency. It relies on other sensors on the engine. Again, this is only a mechanical part. The ECU relies on other sensors of in the engine to determine the health of the overall engine. Now, an underboost code only tells the car that, hey, you're not making as much boost as you need to be. If there's a big leak somewhere, I'm gonna repeat this again. If there's a big leak somewhere because there's a crack over here or a leak over there or the PCV system not working or whatever have you, your turbo could be brand spanking new. But if you've got two large boost leaks and a bad PCV issue, you will still trip a P0299 engine code. Make sure you diagnose everything properly. Now I've made videos on how to you know, test for boost leaks, how to inspect the PCV system on this car, and hopefully other people will make them for your particular vehicle if this does not apply to you. But again, the point is, make sure you inspect everything before you go off spending money on a turbo only for the code to come back in a few months and you wondering why. All right, well, hopefully this has been informative. Uh, please like my video, please subscribe. Uh, please share it with as many people as you want. Check out the uh, BNR Wastegate Actuator here. I wanted to point this out because this is one of the uh, potential failures. When this, sorry, I forgot to mention this. This little rubber diaphragm that's in here can sometimes fail. And if that fails, the wastegate will not be functioning correctly. So some of the time when you're getting an overboost range or underboost code, it may be because this little part has failed and you can replace that for a lot cheaper than you can replace the whole unit. All right, anyways, message in the comments if you have any questions about this kind of stuff. <clears throat> Again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like, please share. Uh, thanks again, guys, and happy wrenching. Bye.